I purchased this beautiful scone pan at a thrift store and I'm planning on giving it as a gift, but not by itself. We're going to fill it with cranberry orange scones. Welcome to The Peaceful Home. I'm Teresa Elling. If you're new here, I have been doing a series on thrifted finds, how to use them in everyday life, especially through the holidays. When I did my gift giving video, I realized that it would make it very long if I included how to make these scones. So just decided to make this a separate video. These scones are fantastic with tea or coffee. I like to serve them with cream and jam. And of course, orange marmalade is particularly good with these scones. Of course, they make a beautiful gift but they are also great to have for Christmas morning or for a potluck. Here are the ingredients you'll need. All-purpose flour, baking powder, sugar, salt, eggs, heavy cream, cranberries, and oranges. You'll also need some powdered sugar for the glaze. I'm going to use my food processor, but you can use a pastry cutter to cut the butter into the flour. I whisk my flour up a bit in the bag or container and then scoop it up and level off. Two cups of flour are needed. One third cup of sugar. This is definitely more sugar than in a normal scone recipe, but that is because of the cranberries. Two teaspoons of baking powder. And half a teaspoon of salt, which I rarely measure. Blend slightly. Oh, I forgot the butter. That's because it's in the refrigerator. You want to keep it very cold until right before you're going to use it. This is six tablespoons cut into chunks. I'm going to pulse this until it gets to be a fine meal. There should be little tiny bits of butter, but if they're like pea size, that's a little too big. My finger in the bottom to hold the blade. And now we're going to add one egg, three fourths cup of heavy cream, vanilla is optional but I love to add vanilla, one to two teaspoons would be great gonna break up this egg yolk just a bit. Cranberries, fresh or frozen, if they're frozen, thaw them. Uh, after you rinse them, you know, if they're squishy or wrinkled up like a raisin, toss those. They should be hard like an apple. One cup of cranberries. This calls for whole cranberries, but I grabbed a handful out and chopped them. Add those in. The recipe I'm using today, I got off Pinterest from Mom on Time Out. Obviously it's new to me, but scone recipes aren't that difficult. And I really loved that she added the orange zest, one of my favorite things. In fact, we will go to that. Need my zester. So zesting, you can't do this with a grater. You do need a zester so that you get a really fine, Peel. Just do it a couple of times and continue turning your orange or lemon or whatever it is you're zesting until you are getting all of the bright orange off. We need three tablespoons of zest for the scones and two teaspoons for the glaze. You really don't have to measure. Anything you put in is gonna be great. And then we're gonna stir this all together. It's 
already starting to look so pretty with the orange and the red from the cranberry. At this point, I just find it easier to dump it out and begin to knead with my hands. This is the messy part. Something you want to remember is that this is a quick bread. Uh, breads using baking soda and baking powder rather than yeast do not need to be kneaded. And if you do need them, you'll develop the gluten and your quick breads will actually be tough. I'm gonna wash my hands and then come back and form these. I'm gonna go ahead and grease the pan. Just rolling back and forth, keeping my edges together, flipping. Now normally you would use a biscuit cutter and cut out your scones, put them on parchment or sill pat or a cookie sheet and bake them separately. But we are going to be cooking these right in the scone pan. I think this actually looks pretty good. It's a little bit smaller than the pan, but when I cut these up, they're going to spread out into each individual compartment. So just cutting into eight even wedges. And I'm going to take each wedge and see how the size is here. Oh, it actually is very close to fitting in there. This one is just a tiny bit too big, so I'm gonna use it kind of as my template. That's perfect. So I'm gonna cut all of these so they're about the same size, and then with the leftover, I can make some extra scones. So you can see how these really fit right inside. And I'm going to push them down just a little bit. This one's a little shy, so I'm just going to grab some of that dough and push it in in that gap, making sure the whole triangle is filled in. I just formed these freehand into little circles. I was able to get four more out of this extra dough. Oven's on to 400. I'm going to take a little bit of extra cream, maybe a quarter cup or so, and a pastry brush. And I'm going to brush the tops of these scones and Sprinkle on a little bit of coarse sanding sugar. This really isn't necessary because we are going to do a glaze. So a lot of times I'll do the sanding sugar and no glaze. Um, in this case, we're gonna do both. The small ones baked for about 10 to 12 minutes and the ones in the scone pan took about 16 minutes. I just finished zesting two teaspoons of orange peel, and now I'm going to juice two to four tablespoons of orange juice. Here come the troops. Three quarters a cup of powdered sugar. To the powdered sugar, I added the two teaspoons of 
orange zest, and then two tablespoons of orange juice. And I like to mix this uh, with a hand mixer, but you can whisk it if you'd like. If you find the mixture is too runny, you can add more powdered sugar, which is what I ended up doing. And likewise, if it is too thick, add a little bit more juice. Um, beat until it's nice and smooth. You can see the parade going on behind me, as well as the scones that are cooling on the counter. Once I finish the glaze, of course I could have used a piping bag, but it's simpler just to use a Ziploc bag for such a small amount. So I put that in the baggie and then just cut a corner off in order to pipe it. I also prepared some whipped cream. I use heavy whipping cream and I blend it until it is starting to thicken and then add in powdered sugar to taste and some vanilla extract. Continue to whip until it's nice and thick, but be careful you don't turn it to butter. In order to pipe this zigzag, the scones need to be completely cool. If you need to ice them when they're still partially warm, I suggest you just kind of frost the entire top. So here we have these all finished. And the way to serve these traditionally is with cream and jam. And if your scone is thin like this, you can just put the cream and jam right on the top. I've got some orange marmalade here. And then cream on top of that. So decadent and amazing. With a cup of tea, this hits the spot. Now, if you have a thicker scone, you would wanna split it, open it, and put your cream and jam on. I also love raspberry jam, that's amazing. Comment below, let me know if you've made scones before and how do you prefer to eat them? Do you eat them plain? Do you eat them with butter and jam, with cream? Mmm. Oh, these are so good. It's the crunch of the sugar on top. <laughs> you want some? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the cameraman gets a uh, <laughs> scone. <laughs> Thank you for joining me today on The Peaceful Home. Happy scone making.